Hello, lovelies. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you've got your tea. Here's mine. It's been a while since we've done a live stream. I was actually out of town last week. For the whole week, I took a vacation because I turned 30 last week and I went to Costa Rica. It was absolutely fabulous. It was so magical. Costa Rica is so beautiful and clean and full of lovely, 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 lovely people. So I had a great time. I sat in a volcanic hot spring for an entire week and I, I thought I would look 10 years younger when I got back, <laughs> but um, our flight back here <laughs> from Costa Rica, we got stuck in Charlotte overnight and so I slept for like three or four hours and I'm still catching up from that. So. I look tired and <laughs> I probably look 10 years older. I don't know. But anyway, cheers. I'm so glad. Can you guys comment? Are you able to comment? Because I changed my, um, I, I don't know if you guys are able to comment at all. I changed the way that I like do my live streams. <gasps> Yay. Oh my God. I'm so relieved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh. I'm drinking some Scottish Highlands tea with a little bit of half and half. So yeah, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that you're there <laughs> because I had to change the when I do a live stream, I had to select that it's not made for kids. I missed you too. Hi, Sylvia. And I had to change that um I had to do something it was about like the restrictions. So now the video is not going to be monetized and it won't be shown to children. <laughs> so I don't I mean, I feel like my videos are perfectly fine for children. Thank you so much. I try. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. So thanks, YouTube. I wonder honestly what's going to happen to YouTube. Do you guys have any thoughts? Um, because I know a lot of people are really upset with the way that everything's being censored and all of that. So I don't know. Maybe there'll be another YouTube. I mean, it used to be YouTube. Um, and now it's kind of like not YouTube. I don't know. Do you guys know what I mean? <laughs> so let's have a little sip of tea. I also made um, some chocolate chip cookies for my lessons this week. I, um, I started to eat one of these ones, but I've started to make like freshly made cookies for all my lessons because you know, sometimes you come in from your busy week and um, you need a cookie and some coffee or tea or something and just say hello and then you can do your lesson. <laughs> But these are really good. I always put a little cinnamon in the cookies. Mm, very yummy. yummy. I wish I could give you some. I have like so many. I put them in like a little tiny sandwich bag and just keep them in the freezer. And then each time I teach a lesson, I just take them out and put them in a little cookie tin, bring them to class. So... Oh, well, you know, you could tell them. <laughs> Say, maybe you could make some cookies because sometimes I'm hungry when I come to my lesson. <laughs> so anyway, let me have some more tea. Let's see, what can I tell you? I, so I'm 30 now. I came back from Costa Rica, got stuck in the airport. I'm very tired still, catching up from everything. Um, it's Are you guys okay with this whole virus thing as well? I just want to take a moment to just like catch up and say hello and then we'll get into everything. But... Um, isn't it kind of scary how the, let's actually, you know what is a better phrase to say? Um, let's say I heard it the other day. It was like, instead of catching, you're catching the happy virus, you're catching a happy virus. So we can, here's some happy virus for you. <laughs> Sending a happy virus your way. Yeah. I think sometimes our news media, yeah, they need to tell you what's going on, but it can just make you feel really freaked out about everything. So just be smart. I actually bought some, um, hi Carl. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I actually bought some, um, antibacterial face masks to wear in the airport, which I never ended up wearing because, um, I know I'm so happy, Kevin. I was like, you know, my last couple live streams have been really frustrating because it's been like me just talking to the camera rather than talking to you guys. And that's the whole joy of doing these live streams is to just all be together, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, if you are traveling, 
here are some travel tips from somebody who has traveled and encountered a little bit of a hardship on the way back. Um, you should definitely go get some hand sanitizing wipes. Just keep them in your bag um, for the plane and just wipe down your seat area when you get on the plane as soon as you buckle your seat. The seat buckle, the little tray, the little wipes there, the hand thingies, just everything. Wipe that down and then um, you could, if you're feeling like you know, if there's somebody that's kind of sick in the airplane or sick next to you, just give them and give yourself a little like face mask to wear. I think it's actually kind of a polite thing to do. I, there was a few people wearing little face masks and you know, in some parts of the world, you have to wear face masks all the time just because of the pollution, but they have special ones that are antivirus or anti, not antivirus, but antibacterial. Um, apparently a virus can still kind of penetrate it, but it's um, just trying to keep you guys, you know, happy and healthy. There's also, um, if you live by a Whole Foods, there's actually um, some great little um, like elderberry extract in the elderberry extract, golden seal extract um, with echinacea, those kinds of things. Just oh, thank you so much. Um, those are always really good to keep. They just kind of give you a little immune boost. Um, so yeah, I think those are all my tips. Bring some little cough drops as well. Those are always good to just for your throat, to soothe your throat and everything. And some cough drops have echinacea and other things in them. So anyway, I think those are my travel tips. Also keep a little bag just in case you have to stay overnight somewhere. So bring a change of underwear, <laughs> bring, um, you know, some like, I always bring my cellar water with me, like a cotton ball and then like a little thing of my cellar water and um, some, you know, face cream and sunscreen. I always, I always bring those kinds of things just in case, cause you never know. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I have no clue what to teach you today. So if you have any requests for anything, just shout it out. Um, I have been reading this book um, in the evening and just kind of, I like to have, you know, sitting right here on my little coffee table by the couch. <laughs> and I like to have some little books and magazines and whatnot here. And it's just really nice. I'm reading this book about trees. I think it's, you know, nice to stay inspired. This is one of the things that I just really love. I love trees. And there's this cute, it's actually all about, I think the trees in England, Ireland, Scotland. And there's this cute little like poem at the beginning here, just so you can see like how beautiful. Um, this little poem, it's from 1791, which I think is the year that Mozart died. Um, Thou wert a bauble once, a cup and a ball, which babes might play with, and the thievish, thievish jay, seeking her food with ease, might have purloined the auburn nut. <laughs> it's actually a long poem. I looked it up, but I just love the phrase, thou wert a bauble once. I just feel like we all need to remember that we were a bauble once and <laughs> very tiny. And just look how big this tree grew. So, yeah. Um... Another sip of tea, another little bite of cookie. You know, with my lessons this week, and actually for the last, I don't know, it feels like forever, like six months maybe, we've been really studying music history and it's been so fun to use a portion of the lesson, you know, warm up some scales, a little music history piece, and then whatever else you're working on. Um, it's nice to kind of set the lesson up in that way. Obviously cookie <laughs> interspersed between everything um, and coffee and tea and whatever, but it's nice to have a little bit of music history in your music lesson. I'm really discovering that it's just opening up a whole new dimension of understanding. Um, to ha so I'm reading this music history book. I actually literally took this to Costa Rica with me and was sitting in a hot spring reading this because that's the kind of nerd that I am. <laughs> It's, I don't know that I bought this for my master's degree or my bachelor's degree. I think I just bought it because I was a music nerd in high school. So I would recommend it. It is a little bit confusing um, if you don't really know music theory. Um, so some parts, you know, just kind of, you might, it might not make any sense, but it is a good one. It's just nice and small. And right now I am somewhere on page... 
94. <laughs> and I'm just getting into 1630 to 1770, that time timeline. And so I've been reading all about ancient music, like being a Paleolithic human and the fact that we, you know, as humans, rhythm is very important to us. Like we can all, um, we're all very easily moved by rhythm. For example, if I was to just um, kind of, if I had a drum, it, this would be nicer. But if you could imagine just listening or just listening to a nice peaceful rhythm and if it goes faster things like that so rhythm is so fundamental to to us as humans like our heart beats in a specific rhythm are we blink in a specific rhythm we walk and we exist in time you know music exists in time as well and if you add like harmony if you add notes to this kind of rhythm or if you're adding notes to that it adds a whole another level of you know interpretation and everything thank you so much i can't understand spanish very well yet um i need to work on it <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just interesting. So I've, I've, my harp is going to arrive this month and I'm, I can't wait to show you it. I literally know nothing about the harp. So, um, I guess I thought maybe at some point we could, when it arrives, we could actually do an unboxing and we'll like open the harp together. But one of the reasons why I bought a harp was because I thought that it would be fun for me to learn a new instrument. And I liked the idea of just being able to pluck a string and for it to sound beautiful and not have to worry about the bow and worry about intonation, all that kind of thing. So, um, but it's just kind of a nice, like, you know, it's an old instrument. People have had harps for like a thousand or 2000 years. In fact, one of the oldest instruments is a solid gold lyre that was found in a tomb in, I think like Ur or Ugarit or some ancient city. Can you imagine a solid gold lyre? you're like the king and you're being serenaded by this like golden instrument and I just it's so magical so um, and then just moving through into the medieval time period and moving into the Renaissance and here we are now in the Baroque 1600 to 1750 and just exploring Baroque music and if you'd like to kind of go along this journey too I'd really encourage you you, you like bookmark this website because <laughs> I literally talk about it in every live stream. You should definitely bookmark violinonline.com. It's also violaonline.com. I think there's a celloonline.com as well. Um, but if you go to their string class tab, there's actually an outline that's a great starting base for you. If you're, you know, if, even if you don't have a teacher, just start there at unit one it's talking about ancient music um, medieval music things from like the first century all the way to like i don't know maybe like a thousand <laughs> a.d i forget exactly when it is maybe like up to i don't know the 12th or 13th century but see that's getting into kind of the middle ages so it's a, just a great place to start then unit two is all sorry my best friend called me, but I had to ignore her. <laughs> For you, I'll call her back later, don't worry. Um, so yes, so anyway, go to Violin Online, just go to their string class tab, um, start in unit one and just have that, let that be a little outline for you to, to explore music with. Um, they give you a little cultural background you know, what was going on in history, the scientific developments, the political the environment, like all that, just kind of like a few little bullet points. And then the next section is the musical, um, you know, stylistic things from that time period. And then there's like a musical example with a recording and the music, and it's a simplified version of the music. Um, so it might, meaning it's not necessarily in the original key, but it's in a key that's easier for a beginner to kind of um, play so it's just really good and and you can from there at least you'll have some examples so that if you do pick up something like this you'll have some like context you know musically um, that you'll have been kind of learning about and maybe recognize some of the composers recognize anything at least have some kind of sound in your head 
There's also, I mean, then you can Google the, um, those pieces on YouTube and find like great performances of the pieces from that outline on YouTube. And you might even just search for composers of the medieval or composers of the, um, you know, Renaissance or the Baroque and like ancient music and just get into knowing that, learn the modes the ancient Greek modes, um, start to learn your scales. We're learning scales in a really interesting way in lessons at the moment. We're, um, I've got my trusty whiteboard. Where is it? <laughs> oh, here. Basically, I just use this and we start with C major. So C major has no sharps and no flats. Oops, sorry. All these distractions. We start with C major and we'll just write out the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I think this is gonna be a Patreon thing um, eventually, so um, I am gonna take you through all of the scales just like I'm doing with my um, studio in this interesting way, because I've actually never learned scales this way. I just, I have this muse that like whispers in my ear from the universe and it's like, you should, <laughs> you should do it this way. So it's very interesting. So we, we find the scale and then I put a drone on. So if we were doing this, scale of C major, I would put a C drone on. We also number the scale degrees, so we can kind of get a reference point and see the relationships between the notes. And we just play the scale, then we'll play the scale in thirds for a little bit more harmonic um, colors. And you just really get to know the feel of each scale. And then we'll do the scale that shares that key signature, but on the um, I'll t yes, I will tell you why it's important to learn scales. Actually, this is this is one of the reasons why. It, it's like a it's like a color palette. So um, we're the interpreters of the music, right? So it's easy when you're reading a poem because we have words we can understand. Hopefully, if it's in our own language, what the words mean. Um, but in music, we don't have words. We have harmony. So like the feel, the notes. We have rhythm. Um, and that's kind of, sometimes there's words, <laughs> but that's kind of it. Those are like the main things. You've got your rhythms, you've got your harmony. Um, and th those two things can help you to interpret the piece. But let's say you're playing a scale, that you're playing a piece that's in the key of C um, versus why would you play, why would it be in C major versus like F sharp major, for example? They have completely different feels. So, um, and you'll never, it's like kind of an abstract concept, I, I know at the moment, but let's say you're in the key of C. For me, the key, the key of C is very heroic sounding. It's the fundamental, it's the beginning. Um, it's just kind of the, ba the baseline number one, right? Home base one. <laughs> it's very comfortable. It's um, easy. It actually sounds very open and, her and I like, I just feel like it sounds very heroic. So I'm gonna say heroic. Um, but then as we progress with one sharp, G major, uh, D major, A major, E major, all the way up the scales, they have a different feel completely. So for example, E major is like very bright. It sounds like a green field. It sounds like spring. I think Vivaldi's spring is actually originally written in E major. It's just some of the happiest music is in E major because it's just bright sounding. It just sounds really, really bright. Um, this week we were kind of dabbling in B major and F sharp major. B major has five sharps and then F sharp major has six sharps. Um, so, did I say that right? Father Charlie goes down and, so the note above A sharp is B, yeah. <laughs> so B major has five sharps and then F sharp major has six sharps. So um, those scales are like so different than C major. B major sounds like sparkly and heavenly actually. Um, when you look at it, it looks like crazy and scary, but um, oh yes, scales. I actually have a video of scales for when you, like for example, if you're gonna play a two octave scale, um, I think that's, it's like one octave and two octave scales. There is a finger pattern for two octave scales. I have a video um, talking about scales. If you just Google scales and um, violin masterclass, violin viola masterclass, there's also some websites, some great websites. If you, I think if you Google Violin Masterclass, that website, um, there's probably some scale um, sheets on there. Also Violin Online. <laughs> I feel like I need a partner with them because I literally, like, they're my best friend. They're my teaching buddy. Um, violin Online, Viola Online, they have scales, a scale section. So they, they, there's a section there they can give you fingerings. 
just look at their um, like strings basic tab like on their website they have a few tabs and I think under string basics or something you'll find some scales um, and with fingerings so but running out of room yes as you go up the fingerboard the distances get smaller and smaller and smaller I need a, like a sip of tea hold on a second So anyway, going back to those little color, of course, of course. So going back to those kind of little differences between, between the scales, it is so cool to use a portion of the lesson to explore that, like holding up this board as if there's something there, you see? <laughs> um, yeah, so each scale, each major scale has a totally different feel, a different color, a different vibe. It's like a person, right? We're all people, but we all have a little bit different vibe. Like, we're a little bit different feel, right? So um, it's the same thing with like a major scale. And then if you were to take its polar opposite, the relative minor, the scale that shares the same key signature. So for example, if you have C major and then you wanna find the scale that shares that same key signature, but it's on the opposite side of the spectrum. So emotionally, for example, that would be A minor. So um, it, it feels completely different emotionally. Um, and there's three different kinds of minor scales. So we've been exploring those and kind of getting to know them and maybe doing like a little improvisation with them. And um, it's just, it's neat because it puts you in touch emotionally with the, with music because that's the whole point of this part of the lesson. Yeah, you're learning a scale, but you're actually tapping into what the scale feels like. So it's kind of cool to get to know it in such an artistic and deeply meaningful way rather than just like play this note, play this note, you're sharp, you're flat, do this, do that. It's actually you're um touching you're you're tapping into what what it actually feels like. <laughs> so it's very cool. And it's neat because when you go back and you study this old music, it is very emotionally based. In fact, um, and it's nice to explore the major and minor scales while we're in the Baroque time period because that was really when they came to be. Before then, it was all kind of like modal and just, um, but it really started to crystallize into major and minor scales um, in the Baroque time period. So harmony became much more complex and more interesting. And, um, yeah, so it's neat to explore the scales during this time period as we're studying the Baroque time period, but it's also um, neat because in the Baroque time period, there's this like element of contrast. Like if you look at the art from that time period, and I don't, I'm not an expert, <laughs> just by like the small amount that I have learned over this small period of time, looking at the art from that time period, it's all like very dramatic. And one of the ways that you can make things dramatic is by upping the the ante, like um, upping the contrast and the the emotion. So for example, using black and then using white, they're complete opposites. So they're very contrasting, right? Black and then white. <laughs> so um, there's lots of art from the Baroque time period that looks very, very dramatic. It's also like on a really large scale. So it's really meant to grab you emotionally. Um, there's a lot of expression in the faces of the people and even in the um, their their position, so they're not just you know standing like this. They might be standing like this, <laughs> for example. So this one versus this one has a little bit more like attitude in there. So what's my favorite time period? I honestly I don't know that I can say that because I I don't know yet <laughs> because we're going through all of these time periods and spending you know so much time in each of them and really getting to know them in a way that I never learned them in school. So it's fun to learn along with my students, you know, about this time. So, but I think so far, I really like medieval music. I really, really like medieval music. It's like, I keep saying like, I'm sorry. It's very simple and I, I just really like the simplicity of things. I don't like things that are like super crazy sounding. Um, they're just, they, they just have their thing and they just do everything just nice and easy and it's just a beautiful sound and it's very uplifting like a lot of the music is actually supposed to elevate you so yeah i think i like the medieval time period i like renaissance music i you know i think once we go through all the time periods i'm gonna just go back to the very beginning again and try to get to know it more it's just music is this study that just is a lifelong 
journey. I mean, you're when you're learning music, you're if you learn it in this interesting way, you have you have to learn the the historical time period, right? So that you have a context of understanding like what was going on in the world, like what was going on in, in Europe, for example, because that's where Western music really originated was in Europe. What was going on in Europe in like 900 AD or like in 800 AD when Charlemagne like united all of Europe and then all of a sudden all of the Catholic churches needed to have the same music. Um, so then they needed to create a system that like the music was, you know, in one place you could read it and, and know it in another place rather than just kind of kind of knowing the music, kind of writing it down, it needed to be specific. So coming up with a notation system for that and just, um, I don't know, it's just really interesting. It's interesting to me. And then the scientific developments and then the looking at the art and then looking at the, the poetry is so interesting. Like if you, I'm really learning that words and music, I mean, that's a very old thing. That's where the word melody comes from they just go hand in hand. So even our musical phrases today, they're like musical sentences. They, um, they have a beginning and then they have an end. And just like when we talk, it's, um, we don't usually end a sentence like this. <laughs> we end a sentence like this. So it kind of tapers at the end, unless it's very specific. <laughs> so music is also that way too. It's just so connected in the way that we, we talk. So, Anyway, I'm just going, I'm just really enjoying this exploration of music at the, at the, t at the moment. And it's just fun. I'm so blessed to, to be able to do this, you know, with my students every day and just make it fun. My goal, I mean, I think my goal is to just have fun. That's like what my life is all about. It's just, I just want to have fun. Yeah, it's going to be hard. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it would be nice to enjoy, have enjoyed the day and have learned something and do something to feed your soul. I think it's just nice. I'm like going on this long soliloquy. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Um, like any music lesson related things? Or are you just, you know, listening to my amazing thoughts? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what, let me read you this little poem. I'm gonna read you, remember the Thou Wert a Bauble thing? I, I did find it. I'm not gonna read you the whole poem. It's, it's called The Yardley Oak, and it's written by William Cowper from 1731 to 1800. So um, this would have been like the classical period, um, Bach and then Mozart and, well, anyway, 1731, so that's, that would be the very, very early, early classical period beginning. So this is a very long poem. I'm gonna just read you a little bit about it. It's about a tree. It's called the Yardley Oak. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, I, I just, I saw your comment. That is so cool. Um, I had no idea I was the, fe the fifth best <laughs> music teacher on YouTube. Well, it's not a competition in my mind, actually. It's just, it's, it's nice that I'm, you know, popping out there in the world. That's cool. If I, if I start to make it a competition, I'm going to be like, I'm going to freak out and not do well. So, <laughs> okay, let's grab a sip of tea and I'm going to read you this little part of the poem about this oak tree. Thou wast a bauble once, a cup and a ball which babes might play with, and the Thebish jay seeking her food with ease might have purloined the auburn nut that held thee. Swallowing down thy yet close folded latitude of boughs and all thine embryo vastness at a gulp. But fate thy groweth decreed. Autumnal rains beneath thy parent tree mellowed the soil, designed thy cradle, and a skipping deer with pointed hoof dibbling the glebe prepared the soft receptacle in which secure thy rudiments should sleep the winter through. So. It's just so sweet. I love, I just love these poems about trees. I, I need to find some like poems from the Baroque time period, honestly. I know that Vivaldi wrote some sonnet, sonnets, or at least they're attributed to Vivaldi that go along with the four seasons. It's actually really neat to, to actually have the sonnet up and then the four, like one of the four seasons that you're learning next to just have them up together because the words, as I was saying, and the music, they go hand in hand. So, um, you know, the, the one, the autumn sounds like this. Right. 
that one's all about like an autumn festival apparently it's about like um you know celebrating a bountiful harvest and then like drinking too much wine and falling asleep <laughs> in like happy revelry so when you play it the bow has to express that oh it's also something about dancing so when you dance you need a nice clear strong rhythm so if i was to play it's kind of boring, but if I emphasize beat one, all of a sudden it has a little bit more attitude, which is neat. So, and, and you might not, you know, know to do that unless you had the word dance there. Oh, it's a dance. People are dancing. They're celebrating. It's kind of crazy. It's getting a little crazy, like a Halloween festival, maybe. So, and then... The, the Largo from Winter, I think we did talk about this at once, uh, at one point on one of our live streams, but the, um, it's actually so cozy. It's about sitting by the fireplace with your family. And it's like raining and it's just cozy outside or inside while it's raining and wintry and it's just nice because knowing those little things from the words of the poems, it just can help you as the artist interpret it. So anyway, let me see if there's anything else. I actually have to go teach today. I have five lessons in the evening and I'm um, going to be heading down to the city and I rent a space down there. It's very, it's very cozy and lovely. So I'm going to pack everything up and get my cookies that I baked today and take Take them to lessons. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions about anything at all? Just Google that and it has the, that list. Yeah, just Google, thank you so much, Sylvia. Google um, Vivaldi Four Seasons poems or sonnets and um, that should come up. It's just, it's interesting. I need to maybe like look into Baroque poetry, Google Baroque art, and it's nice, it, it is nice for us to learn through contrast. So if you Google Baroque art and then the period right before that, which was the Renaissance, Renaissance and Baroque, and then even medieval. If you can look at all three of those, it's gonna help you to see the, the progression um, of art. And then you could even look at some poems like Shakespeare was in the, the Renaissance, right? I think in England. So, and there's all these like different regions, right? You've got England, you have Germany, France, Italy, Spain. There's just, thank you so much. There's all these like different regions and styles in these different time periods, oh, sorry, areas of Europe. So what am I saying? <laughs> like when you're studying this kind of music, there's, if you're looking at a French piece, it's gonna have a little bit different sound um, than a German piece or an English piece or a Spanish piece or an Italian piece. Um, they all kind of like value the different things in their music from, from all these time periods. And it, oh my gosh, looking into the troubadours would be, I, I like desperately want to be a troubadour. <laughs> That's like what I would love to be. So in fact, my, my music teacher, my very first music teacher, she's like my mom. She, she lives in Alaska now, but she was visiting last year. I think it was last year. Anyway, and she was like, we should go like play music outside. And I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, we're troubadours. We're troubadours. We should go like serenade people. Like, let's go share our, you know, music with humanity and uplift everybody. And, and I was just like, I, I can't do that. Like I, I like play, I would, I have to practice. Like I have to practice everything. And I, I don't even know what we would play and everything. She's like, let's just go. But we never ended up doing it. Cause we both just got tired and we just wanted to just enjoy being together. But she, the fact that she was like, we're troubadours, like we're troubadours, we have to go, you know, bring music to the world. <laughs> so I just loved that. And what a fun, fun thing to be. In fact, a lot of troubadours were from the aristocracy. Like there's um, a Duke of Aquitaine, I think I'm pr probably pronouncing that wrong, but he fought in the Crusades. He was French, he fought in the Crusades you know, he commanded this army, he wrote poetry, and he wrote music, and he was a troubadour. So imagine, like, such a well-rounded, uh, 
what would you call that? The aristocracy? I don't know. It's just, I guess if you were, if you were a noble person, you were really expected to, to be, like to have a noble education, to like think nobly, that your thoughts were actually higher and elevated, that you had actually the time even to contemplate anything higher than just, you know, eating and surviving and shelter and, you know, your health and your family and everything. So it's, it's nice now that today we have all this time, we have all this time, we could actually spend our time elevating our thought and um, doing something that's really beautiful. Like you can actually add so much beauty to your life, which is, you just gotta remember, like actually you're really, you are in control of your life. So just take your life by the reins and then just go make your life how you want it. How could you make your life more beautiful? How could you make your life more comfortable and fabulous and cozy and, you know, exciting or just more happy? How could you make your life more of a, of a life that's meaningful and joyful for you? Because you really only have, you just have this one, like, time. So, and every second you have a new opportunity. So even if you've been in something for, you know, a year or five years or 10 years or, you know, a hundred years, you could decide to change something in every second is just a new moment. So that's my <laughs> out there thought for you, this one. I'm gonna love and leave you, you guys. Thank you so much for all of your support and thank you to all of the <clears throat> new subscribers and patrons. Every month, if you're curious about Patreon, I did upload like a really <laughs> a brief clip of just a mini lesson that I, I upload every Monday on Patreon. <clears throat> I actually put that on my Instagram. So if you are, it, if you want to stay in contact more, just follow me on Instagram. Just go do it. It's Violin Viola Masterclass on Instagram. I always, I try to do a story every day. So just like a little clip of either my music lessons or what I'm wearing as a teacher or just anything like just some, what I'm doing that's in the story. And then I might just like post, you know, little pictures of videos during the, during the week. So, um, Follow me on Instagram, Violin Viola Masterclass. And then if any of you are interested, if you want to have something to supplement your lessons, because there's really, the thing with music teachers is we only have you for an hour every week. So there's literally so much. Like I've spent 40 minutes almost just babbling to you about something that I feel is, you know, interesting and important. But if I spent 40 minutes in your lesson just talking to you about this, you'd be like, you know, I have to like play a scale or something. I have to play, <laughs> I wanna learn something. So there's only so much time. So that's why this patron thing is like a supplemental thing. It's only a dollar. And um, my goal really is to take you through just some really fundamental things. So we started with intervals. We went through all of the intervals, although I forgot the octave. So I'm gonna have to go back and add the octave in there. And then once we've done all of the intervals, which we did, we are moving on to the hand patterns so that you can apply your intervals into your fingers and just get those basic, you know, four hand patterns down on one string. Then we'll do it on a half step. Then we'll do them between the strings and maybe across all the strings so you can kind of get around. And then after that, we'll start to learn the scales. I wanted to share you that, <laughs> I know I forgot the octaves. We'll, we'll go through the scales and I really wanna share with you, you know, how I've been teaching the scales because it's so interesting and meaningful. It's like an artistic color palette. Like you are looking at this shade of, you know, blue and you, oh, I like the darker blue or I like the lighter blue or I like this greenish blue or this like, you know, blackish blue, like all these different kinds of shades of blue and it's just, it's nice to tap into music in this way, um, in this feeling way, and use scales to do that. So, um, yeah, so Patreon is basically just this place where I, I'm going to be incrementally, like, giving you content every Monday. It's just a six or seven minute or so video that I publish every Monday. Um, yeah, so that's just patreon.com slash Violin Viola Masterclass. Like, everything is Violin Viola Masterclass. My website is Violin Viola Masterclass, Instagram, Violin Viola Masterclass, the YouTube channel, um, what else? That's it, I just have my website, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon, <laughs> that's it. Those are my four things I use. So anyway, you guys, I'm gonna love and leave you. Thank you so much for joining and I'm so glad that we got the, you know, the comments. <laughs>
Mwah. I'm gonna I'm sending a great big hug actually let's um like do this put your arms around yourself and we're, I'm gonna send you a great big hug I don't do Twitter yeah hey Fanny <laughs> yeah no Twitter no I don't know why I don't do Twitter sometimes you need to give yourself a hug right but just pretend that it's me giving you a hug right so all my love and is going your way all my love is going your way Okay, so I'll see you, um, let's see, this week, next week. I should be able to meet next week. It's just a little crazy the first two weeks this month, um, but the end of February will be back to kind of normal. So um, if I happen to not be here next week, I promise then I'm not, I'm not abandoning you. It's just I'm traveling a little bit. So um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Uh, please follow me on Instagram. Go check out Patreon. It's just a dollar or you don't, it's sometimes there's stuff there that you don't have to even subscribe for, but it's there for you if you want it. And I will see you very soon. Mwah.